Hey everybody, on today's episode of Games with Bill, I've got a big delay coming from Square Enix, but before we get to that, I want to talk about a few other things. Firstly, Nintendo. Nintendo is about to run into the same uh, speed bump or potholes, uh, whatever, however it is that you want to talk about it. They're going to run into the same problem that Microsoft and Sony have been dealing with for the past year, and that is the chip shortage. Now, it's not to say that Nintendo has not had issues with the chip shortage, but when it comes to finding an Xbox or a PlayStation, those have been a lot more rare in the wild than, say, a Nintendo Switch. Well, it looks like Nintendo's luck is finally starting to run out. Uh, president of Nintendo, Mr. Shintaro Furukawa, recently said this. He said, I can't say that I was able to supply enough for demand after Black Friday and after the beginning of the year. It depends on demand, but as I was concerned, there will be an impact that I can't make as many as I want to make. And that is not something you want to hear if, say, you just got a cool gift card for Christmas or something and you were planning on using it to buy yourself a Nintendo Switch. You might want to start looking now rather than later because it's going to be tough to find, according to Mr. Furukawa. Speaking of Nintendo, recently I talked about how Breath of the Wild 2 was rumored to be coming out in November of 2022 thanks to a leak from Per Schneider of IGN. Uh, remains to be seen whether or not that's true, but we have another leak that is telling us of another game that's supposed to come out in November of 2022. And that's Sonic Frontiers. This leak comes from PlayStation Database, which has been known to get things right in the past. Now, there is, of course, always the possibility that this is simply a placeholder, and we don't really know when Sonic Frontiers is coming out. So take this rumor with a grain of salt, as you always should. However, if you look at the history of mainline Sonic games, they do have a tendency to be released in November. Now, if I'm Sega... Would I put my game out the same month as Breath of the Wild 2? I don't think so. Uh, I know that they're very separate styles of games, but in the Venn diagram of people who like Zelda games and people who like Sonic games, I do think that there is a lot of overlap in that Venn diagram. So might be best to avoid Breath of the Wild. And honestly, like I said, it's just a rumor, but if I'm Sega, I'm paying really, really close attention to what Nintendo is doing with Breath of the Wild 2 so that I, and, and honestly, any developer should be paying close attention to what um, Nintendo is doing with Breath of the Wild 2. I went back and forth on whether or not to cover this at all on the show because it's a game made by Blizzard. And uh, right now, I personally have absolutely no interest in buying games made by Blizzard because I don't want to support the crappy things that management has been doing to the employees there. Now, don't think for a second that if you are somebody who's going to be playing Diablo 4, that I'm wagging my finger at you and telling that you telling you that you're a bad person for doing it because guess what? Your money is going to support the developers of the game just as much as it is, as it is the horrible management. And the people who are employed by Blizzard, they deserve to you know have those jobs because blizzard makes really really good games and just because i'm mad at the management doesn't mean that the people who make the games should be punished for that so it's a really there's there's it's not black and white it's an extremely gray area uh right here so that's why i struggled about whether or not i was going to cover it but i figured there's probably plenty of people out there who either watch or listen to the show um who are going to be playing Diablo 4 and are interested in this. So let's talk about this. There's this cool tweet from the official Diablo account that is showing the way that Paragon points work in Diablo 4. Now they did they did say this is not final and that things might change, but this is a really, really cool way for endgame. So basically what happens is you unlock Paragon points when you hit level 50 in Diablo 4 and then in order to progress you have these different boards like almost like board game boards that you can grab and rotate and navigate your way through by you level up get a paragon point you spend that point through this cool rotating branching diagram in order to 
chase down like rare titles or cool skins that you would want to use in the game. And I personally think that this is a very, very interesting way to handle end game in what is very much a super repetitive game. And please don't think that I'm saying that Diablo being a super repetitive game is a bad thing because I adored Diablo 1. Diablo 3, I bought three damn times. That's how much time I put into it. I adore these games. I really want to play Diablo 4, but right now I'm not going to. Hopefully Blizzard does something about the management at their company and they do things right by their employees in order to make it a better place to work so that then I can feel okay buying Diablo 4, putting money towards Blizzard, and then being able to do this really cool Paragon Point thing because I think it looks very, very fun and addictive. So a little bit ago, Ubisoft announced that they were introducing NFTs into Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I recently talked about my thoughts on NFTs in video games. I'm not a fan of NFTs in general and bringing them into video games, I think is a big thumbs down anyway. Um, but it's obviously not going to stop um, you know, developers and publishers from trying to chase that extra dollar that they can make one way or another. However, as of the writing of this article that I'm looking at right now from Eurogamer, um, the introduction of NFTs into Ghost Recon Breakpoint has earned Ubisoft thus far about $1,700, which is not a lot. They sold a grand total, as, again, as of the time that, that this article came out, of 15 NFTs. Now, to be completely fair, um, Ubisoft is giving away most of the NFTs, you know, that whole, your first taste is free. But those numbers are pretty terrible. Now... I'm not somebody that likes to relish in other people's misery, but I feel like in this case, a little bit of schadenfreude is, is okay because it's clear that gamers, not everybody, I don't like to put everybody in one bucket, but it's clear that m the majority of gamers don't want this kind of monetization to be included in video games. Now, is the quote unquote failure or the failure thus far of uh, Ubisoft Quartz beta enough to dissuade Ubisoft and other publishers from trying to chase that NFT hype in order to be able to milk just a little bit more money out of the games that they make? Probably not. It's probably not going to stop them. We're probably going to continue to see NFTs infiltrate our video games and hopefully Hopefully those those NFTs never affect gameplay and the majority of us can just ignore them as the stupid trash that they are. But oh, I really hope that I really hope that this kind of thing where companies try it and they fall on their face becomes a trend because it's it's very easy for us to all jump on Twitter and say NFTs are stupid but if one of those NFTs is a really cool skin that you really, really want, and then you buy it anyway, even though you don't like NFTs, you're part of the problem. All right, let's move on to talk about Square Enix. I have a few news stories that I want to talk about that have to do with Square, but the first one is this big delay that I mentioned at the top of the show. That big delay is Final Fantasy 16. For those of you who are in the know, we were expecting to hear more about Final Fantasy 16 sometime this year, but as we are quickly approaching the end of 2021, it's clear that that is not going to happen. And Square even recently published a letter from Mr. Yoshida, who is the producer of Final Fantasy 16. Here's what he had to say. Greetings, everyone. When last we spoke, I promised I would have more information on Final Fantasy 16 sometime later in 2021. However, I regret to inform you that I will be unable to keep that promise as complications stemming from the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic have delayed the game's development by almost half a year. As the latest addition to the Final Fantasy series being developed for the PlayStation 5, Final Fantasy 16 has amassed a sizable team composed of talented creators from around the world. However, 
In an effort to offset the effects of COVID-19, we've had to decentralize that workforce by permitting staff to tackle their assignments from home. This is unfortunately hampered the communications from the Tokyo office, which in turn has led to delays in, or in extreme cases, cancellations of assets deliveries from our outsourced partners. That said, we have spent much of 2021 addressing this issue and hope to see its impact to a minimum by the new year, allowing us to better focus on the task at hand. Increasing graphic resource quality, refining combat mechanics, fleshing out individual battles, putting the finishing touches on cutscenes, and conducting overall graphical optimization. Our primary goal now is to be as hands-on with the game as possible in order to see it fully polished. So that leaves us with a question. When can we expect the next round of information? Well, I'm happy to announce that the current plan is to conduct our next big reveal in spring of 2022, as we seek to build excitement leading up to the game's eventual release. I deeply apologize to all those who have been looking forward to learning more about Final Fantasy 16, and thank you for your continued patience while we focus on our combined efforts on development. I think that it's great that they have set expectations and told everybody, look, this is what's going on. And I think that this is a really good window of transparency into what it's like to develop video games during the pandemic and all of the, the delays that we've seen. And we've seen a lot of delays. There were lots of games that were supposed to come out this, this year, I'm recording this in 2021, uh, that got pushed until next year. And to be like, to be really clear, spring of 2022 looks to be absolutely stacked with game after game after game. And if we thought 2021 was a really good year for games, and it was, 2022 looks to be even more stacked. So I think that it's really good for Square to be completely transparent and tell everybody this is what's happening. This is why you don't have more information about Final Fantasy 16. I think that that is great. I personally am disappointed, but on the other hand, as somebody who does not have his own PlayStation 5, I've got an Xbox Series X. My son has a PlayStation 5 that is in his room. I'm not gonna get to play Final Fantasy 16 until I get my hands on a PS5. And getting my hands on a PS5 is incredibly difficult right now. So I'm actually looking forward to this delay because it means I'll have more time to try and get my hands on a PS5 before the game comes out. So here's the question. When does the game come out? Because it seems like they it's been delayed by at least half a year. Does it come out in 2022 at all? Or does it get pushed completely to 2023? Or am I just way ahead of the curve here and this game isn't coming out until end of 2023 or 2024? I'm really not sure. Let me know down below. Speaking of Final Fantasy, this one is irritating and um, definitely a problem that is, is going on with, I would say, not just Final Fantasy, but some PC ports in general. And that is that some people who have purchased Final Fantasy VII Remake on the Epic Games Store have been unable to play the game at all because the servers were down when they went to play it. And you might be like, well, I mean, that kind of thing happens all the time, but this is not a multiplayer game. This is a single player game that should have an offline mode and when you try and launch the game in offline mode, it says I can't connect to the Epic Games Store, so I am not going to launch. That just, like, this is the kind of DRM that hurts the players who pay money for the game because I guarantee you, the pirates, the people who have stolen the game are not running into this issue. They are playing the game no problem. This kind of DRM has not stopped pirates from playing the game it just stops paying customers from playing the game and this feels like man I, I kind of forgot about DRM because I don't really have to deal with it all that much because I'm more of a console gamer than a PC gamer but DRM is definitely still a problem and the idea that a a single player game is unplayable when you don't have an internet connection 
is really, really frustrating. And I honestly can say, avoid Final Fantasy VII Remake on PC at all costs, because everything that I have read about has said that the port is low effort, and um, now, if you don't have an internet connection, you can't even play. So let's imagine that you're somebody who wants to get a Steam Deck and maybe install Final Fantasy VII Remake on your Steam Deck. And you will be able to do that whether or not it's officially supported by Valve or not. <laughs> maybe you don't want to do that because if you don't have an internet connection, you won't be able to play this game. Keeping with the theme of playing Square Enix games in an offline mode, Dragon Quest X Offline. Let, let me say that again for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about. Dragon Quest X Offline. I didn't say that wrong. Dragon Quest X is an MMO and they're remaking the MMO so that you can play it offline so you're not connected to a server and everything. That game has been delayed until summer of 2022. I know that there's a lot of people who are looking forward to that game. It was supposed to come, I believe, to Japan um, in February, and now it's been delayed until summer. Now, is that a big deal? No, I would prefer a game be delayed and be awesome than be rushed and be terrible. So I think that that's perfectly fine. Uh, but here's my question, is Dragon Quest X offline are you going to run into those same issues that the people who just bought Final Fantasy VII Remake are running into? It's definitely something to think about and something to wonder about. The last bit of Square Enix news that I want to talk about before we get out of here is the trailer. Uh, there's a new Japanese story-focused trailer uh, for Project Triangle Strategy, which, if you don't know what that is, think Final Fantasy Tactics made with the Octopath Traveler engine, which looks absolutely gorgeous now if you don't speak japanese like me uh then you can watch this trailer and get to see all of the cool stuff and not be spoiled on anything because it's all in japanese there's no english and i have no idea what they're talking about but i still got to see the cool graphics and, and get more hyped about the game now the last thing that i want to say about project triangle strategy before i wrap up the show today is that there's one part of my brain that is really, really excited for this game. But then there's another part of my brain that remembers the last, I don't know, five or six big JRPGs that I've bought and not finished because I don't have the attention span for them. Like they're really, really good games, but I never finished them. And like, look, if you've been listening to my content for any length of time, you know that I have a tendency to not finish games, but JRPGs, are huge, massive games with hundreds of hours of gameplay. And I generally, with those games, just barely scratch the surface. I have a lot of fun when I'm playing them, but I never come close to finishing them. I get far enough into the game to learn all of the mechanics and then some new shiny thing distracts me and I never get back to it. So I'm struggling on whether or not I should allow myself to get excited about Triangle Strategy because I think what's probably going to happen is I'll buy that game, I'll really love that game for about 15 or 20 hours, and then I'll set it down and go play something else, something repeatable that I don't need to use my brain for, which is what I've been doing a lot of lately. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Are you excited about Triangle Strategy? And do you watch uh, these story-based trailers or do you try and say completely, uh, stay completely spoiler free? All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. If you're watching this over on my YouTube channel, feel free to watch this video next. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.